Now, in his new Netflix documentary, the Duke of Sussex has revealed his anger at the media for not covering injured soldiers returning from Afghanistan and claims that he had no support from his family when he returned. The documentary is about the Invictus Games, which are an adaptive sports competition launched by the Duke in 2014 for injured service personnel and veterans. Now, joining me to discuss this is Trevor Colt, veteran who works with a PTSD Resolution, a charity that helps to support armed forces veterans with their mental health. Um, thank you so much for joining me tonight, Trevor. First, I just want to explain why this story is important to me. I'm a journalist. As a tabloid journalist, I worked in theatres of war. I know you have much more experience than me, but I actually was covering what happened in Bosnia. And for Prince Harry to say that the papers, the tabloids in particular, don't care about army personnel, I found particularly upsetting, and especially when you take into the fact that 79 journalists were killed covering events in Afghanistan since 1992. Anyway, that's why I'm angry about this. This isn't an I hate Ma Harry, I hate Meghan thing. Put that aside, right? I'm just genuinely angry about what he has said in this documentary. So, Trevor, now you actually know what you're talking about, unlike me mostly. So, I'm assuming you have watched some of Harry's Netflix documentary on the Invictus Games. Well, first of all, Dawn, thanks for having me on your show. Uh, yes, uh, I haven't actually watched on Netflix. I, I unsubscribed to Netflix quite some time ago when they brought out that nonsense at home with the Harkles type thing. But uh, I agree with you about the media. Uh, that is nonsense. I personally have worked with dozens of journalists over the last five or six years who have worked tirelessly uh, to get stories out about Afghanistan, about what was happening in Afghanistan. If it wasn't for the media, Help for Heroes wouldn't have launched. Uh, lots of charities wouldn't have raised hundreds of millions of pounds. The Sun's campaigns raised millions of pounds to help build a swimming pool at Headley Court. So it is nonsense what he's saying. And it, it I'm baffled about some of the things that comes out of Harry's mouth. I think he's unstable and maybe it's time that we have him sectioned. Right, Trevor, so you, you actually do work very closely. I mean, you uh, you uh, joined 20 years serving in various theatres across the globe. You were awarded the Military Cross in 2016. So uh, you actually do know what you're talking about, and you are a veteran campaign. You've raised over uh, £250,000 for veterans' causes. Now, so as someone, a very experienced um, army veteran... What do you think the effect of Harry's comments have on fellow vets like yourself? And to be honest with you, the Invictus Games, does it reflect badly on the Invictus Games? The answer is yes to that, Dawn. Uh, first of all, uh, myself and the majority of the veterans community um, have really stopped listening to what comes out of Harry's mouth. Um, he, he doesn't reflect that of, for instance, uh, the Army's values and standards, integrity, discipline, loyalty. He doesn't uh, reflect any of that. He has to remember that uh, when you join the military, you do sign the oath of allegiance. Mm -hmm. And, and one, of the things you, one of the things you should never do is attack Her Majesty the Queen or the members of the royal family, which he's done relentlessly. Um, I honestly think the Invictus Games are stained. They're quite stained because... The athletes there are all, mm. all, all the wounded servicemen and women. I mean, have they train all year round to try mm. and showcase their talents. It's all they've got. And for someone to stand in front of them and talk about he never had a support structure, mm. as a, mul a multi-millionaire with Headley Court, with the Priory, he has connections to every person. Let's be honest, his family has connections to every politician, mm. every professor, every professor, every psychologist. I mean, the heads of charities, he's got them all at his fingertips, and he stands there and preaches in front of guys and women who are double and triple amputees who struggle to pay their bills. He is not a representative of the veterans community, and it's about time we stop highlighting and pretending that he is. And obviously, look, I'm not trying to take away from Harry what he has done setting up the Invictus Games. It is an amazing thing, and I have watched some of that documentary, and the stories there are incredibly moving. And that's what I wanted to watch. I wanted to hear how these people have come the most amazing injuries, serving us, mm. keeping keeping us safe, basically, um, and, and suffered the most horrendous injuries, and have overcome this, and are so brave in what they're doing with, 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 with sort of like, you know, with, with their training and, and getting a new lease of life in them. So amazingly brave. 
Okay. And then for Harry to come along and target, and this it is, this isn't an anti-personal rant. I just think it's so unfair on veterans who I was very lucky and honoured to work with in Bosnia. And some of what those young lads, younger than me at the time, saw out there was horrific. You must have seen some very horrific things as well. And obviously, you, as I said, you work with PTSD victims as well. Now, Harry has spoken about not receiving help from this, which people have disproved, obviously. Um, and I think, as uh, Lord General Dannett said, uh, recollections may vary. But do you think there is a hint, Trevor, that Harry might still be suffering from some form of PTSD in that his recollections are varying and some of the things he says are offensive to the likes of yourself? Well, Don, uh, it's quite clear that he's suffering from something. If anything, uh, he's a hostage in a relationship and it's coming across as uh, it's coming across that way. Now, a lot of the veterans that I speak to on a daily basis um, have just brushed him aside as if he doesn't matter anymore. Mm. When there was, when which is very sad, Don, because there was a time when Harry could have been like uh, the Tussar of the veterans community. He he could have achieved yeah, a lot. Exactly. And let's not pretend that oh, Harry invented the Invictus Games. He actually stole the idea from the Warrior Games in the US and brought it to the UK. Yeah, true. And let's not. Let's not think for one minute that Harry put this together. He's not intelligent enough to put this together. There was a team of experts, men and women, that did this for him. So he hasn't really added much value apart from the HRH title. And the one thing that I will point out is I find it embarrassing that an individual keeps keeps monetizing veterans because he left, he ran away from the UK a few years ago and he hasn't actually gave any money or helped a military charity out in the UK. But when it comes to a chance that he might lose his Netflix contract, he jumps shit on the veteran's bandwagon and monetizes his show for his own financial gain. So um, I, I don't hold him in high regard, Don. I'm really sorry, but I don't. Which is a, it's such a shame because, you know, I mean, there are so many people achieving amazing things due to the Invictus Games, as you've already said. Um, Trevor, the other, obviously, the other, as a veteran, the other question I want to ask you tonight is um, Grant Shapps, who's the uh, new Defence Secretary. Um, what do you make of that? Uh, a massive surprise, if I'm <laughs> honest. Um, we we are in a time dawn where we and it's all. I think we all know we are in the middle of a proxy war with Russia. Um, our 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 military uh, might is at an all time low. Um, we should be showing leadership, strong leadership and determination in the face of our enemies. And we're showing at the minute that we've got a guy in charge of our military who hasn't even been in the boys' brigade and the scouts. Never mind the military. So. <laughs> It's, um, it's a little bit shocking. And the reason why I find it shocking is this. We currently have several members of parliament that are great candidates to be a defence minister. We have several that have served in the military mm. that, could be, that could have done a fantastic job. But at the minute, it seems to me that Rishi Sunak is sort of... Why is he playing down a very, very important role at the minute? You know, um, we should have our best in there, not someone that's a novice. As you say, Trevor, it's such an important time as well. I mean, we have literally got a war in Europe on our doorsteps. Uh, and Ben Wallace, I mean, what, what was your opinion of Ben Wallace? Do you think Ben was doing a good job? Ben was. Ben was doing a decent job. Don't get me wrong. Uh, with with most jobs, uh, I spoke to Johnny Mercer about this, but in most jobs, uh, Johnny, Mercer, sorry, Johnny Mercer would have been a fantastic candidate for that role. Uh, I'll say that. But uh, we have a lot of pen pushers in Whitehall, uh, civil servants, which are controlling which are controlling a lot of high positions in our government. And it's not looking good when people are coming from university, getting rules and then controlling important rules. I honestly believe that the Ministry of Defence should go back to the War Office, where we have retired generals, brigadiers, mm. colonels making those decisions, and we stop these civilians getting these rules, mm. which they clearly are unfit to do. Mm. Oh. You, you mentioned Johnny Mercer. Is anyone else, you know, currently in the cabinet that you would have liked to have seen the, take the role rather than our um, Grant Shapps? Uh, Mark Francois would be a good one. We had the old. We did have Penny Mortal then there at one stage. Yes, and I will yeah. be honest, she did a decent job. But again, she got moved on. She met, Today in Parliament and uh, Government, we have great candidates for great roles. But then again, someone will say, well, Penny once brushed past me in the corridor and I felt offended. So we are now moving out people that are fantastic for the rules because of allegations. Uh, Johnny would have done a great job. Mark Francois, Penny Mordaunt, we've got Clive Lewis. We've got, we've got several uh, MPs in there, which I think could have been up to the job. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you've moved us nicely on to the other subject I want to talk to you about, Trevor, which is obviously the Ukraine situation. Um, you know, the, the war is ongoing on Ukraine. Um, how worried do you think 
we should be in the West. I know this sounds terribly selfish, but people are concerned about what happens in this country. How, how much of a threat do you think what is happening in Ukraine and certainly the involvement of Russia and potentially China is to people in this country? Don, do you know what? I don't think you wanted me to bring this up, but all these things, and in my opinion, uh, we need to look at the Biden administration when you look at China, because, I mean, this all falls in a circle, and, and it's to do with, for instance, the Biden administration has stopped exporting goods to China. And in doing so, uh, China's put a lot of pressure on Taiwan. Taiwan vast produces microchips, which are used in every type of, uh, every type of, of computer system and, and, and things we use today, electronics. And, and the weird thing is in China, uh, China are under extreme pressure because they've got an aging population, um, which is forcing mass unemployment. There's not enough people to fill the jobs. Uh, China's uh, about to implode. Their GDP at the minute is over 350%, which no one's talking about. 350%. No economy in history has ever been able to sustain that without collapsing. Mm. So China is a worry, uh, in, in my opinion. And, and maybe that's why China's putting pressure on Taiwan, because they're getting nothing from America. They need the microchips produced, vast produced in Taiwan. So there's there's conflict potentially out, out, in, out, out there as well, Don. So, you know, if you look at the bigger picture, um, I'm going to be honest, uh, America are our cousins, you know, we fight with them, we do lots of things, we trade with them. Uh, well, we used to trade a lot more with them until Biden mm. took over. So the problem in the West at the minute all stems, not to the American people, but in my opinion, it all stems to the Biden administration that's causing issues not only in Ukraine, in China, in Korea, in Taiwan. So I think until there's a new president, uh, we're not going to see much improve in the West. Trevor, you're not really helping me on a Friday night, um, but I, I just want to say um, thank you so much for joining us. But before you go, Trevor, um, how do people, if there's anyone watching this or listening to you on the radio tonight who wants to get in touch and feels like, you know, they are a veteran and they are suffering, what advice would you give them? Where can they go to get the help and the support they need? Don, uh, if anyone out there is suffering and they've served in the armed forces, I would suggest they get on the phone and phone PTSD Resolution. PTSD Resolution are fantastic. They brought me back from being homeless. They brought me back from being broken. They brought me back from potential suicide. And now I'm able to reach out and do a little bit. I wish I could do more, but I don't. But that's who to get in touch with, PTSD Resolution or SAFA. They do great work. Brilliant. And we can find them online, can we, if we do a search online for them? Yes, yes, we can. Perfect. Uh, Trevor, it's been an absolute pleasure talking tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate your insight on all that. That's uh, Trevor Cole, um, um basically a military cross winner there. Um,